Yeah. All right. We are going to go ahead and get started here. Thank you all for coming back for day two of our dojo. And uh, we're, we're kicking off the day with an Ask Me Anything with our board of director. Um, we currently have two directors, oh, look, three, three directors present, as well as Karsten Wade, who just recently stepped down from the board of directors. And uh, we, are, we are ready to take your questions. I have a few staged questions if nobody has any, but uh, please do put your questions in the Q&A tab as you have them. And uh, let's get started. Yeah, it's a standard disclaimer. Uh, I don't speak for my employer. As they've asked me to always remind people of that. Um, it, it may actually be worth saying none of the board members, with one exception, actually represents an employer. They all represent themselves. That sole exception is actually me. Um, I am the Red Hat liaison to the CentOS project, and so my voice is actually the representative voice of Red Hat for the, the project. All true. So I'm going to lead with a question since we don't have any yet. We recently asked for nominations for the empty seats on the board of directors. What are you all looking for in a nominee? So I'll go since we've got uh, some dead space here. I'm looking for someone who really cares about our community. Um, We've had uh, some turmoil and some unrest and some confusion, but we also have a great volume of really talented, really technical people who have found a space together. And I want to keep as many of them together as we can without like hurting any of you, like join Alma, join Rocky, join whomever. That's great. But I don't want to lose any of you. Um, I want to keep your technical talent here so that we can make this project really fit and meet with your actual technical needs. Uh, now that we have the ability to make transformative changes into what the project is going to be, I, I would love someone who would like to make those transformations and someone who's really passionate about empowering our community members to feel like they have a voice in where this product roadmap is going. Maybe to, to add on that, I think uh, we want ones that that try to contribute to the community, try to give uh, maybe a different aspect of uh, what we worked on, to see different opinion as well on, on the decision uh, that are being made uh, across the board. And uh, well, well, I started to contribute to, to CentOS Infra when I started, and there are probably two persons that knew I was working uh, on the Infra team for CentOS to do stuff, and I was not very famous around, and I started like that. So, I mean, uh, we have a lot of uh, proposal of people that have been in the community uh, for for few uh, for few many years and uh, are doing different things. So we are excited to get uh, to know people because we may not know that every single person working on CentOS. So it's why it's a good opportunity. If you know someone, even if you have a doubt, propose him, her, uh, uh, as a nominee, and uh, and uh, there will be a vote. And I mean, tell us uh, if you think that someone should be part of the board and that can represent a different aspect. It will be great uh, to to hear from the community. So um, we would like to see, or what I would like to see, uh, is. Uh, to echo Bonnie's comment in the chat, first some diversity, that would be great. And some folks who are passionate would be great. Those who wish to actually be active in helping the project explore the space that is available to us, whether that's in encouraging SIGs to grow and do amazing things on top of an operating system, to extend an operating system, to change an operating system, or to propose ideas and work and grow the community around the core operating system that we produce. Um, I, I think that it doesn't matter as much if they have huge, deep technical depth, because this is a governing board. And so we're looking for folks who can, ex who can really enable others to be successful and guide a project. Um, Red Hat has a lot of experience with solid open source projects. And if you look at those, you'll see the kinds of boards and, and governance structures that we tend to like. 
so as the as the outgoing person, this actually helps me, you know, a little a little bit explain like part of my reasoning for heading out, really. Um, and and Bonnie, it was to Bonnie's point in chat, which is that um, you know d d diversity of thought is a, is is a nice thing on the board, but we have, but obviously we don't have any diversity along uh, many other angles. And the um, you know aside from the to um, from any other possible discussions, the the science is in about the uh, how how uh, having a diverse group of people uh, working on a, working on an effort together, um, people with uh, with widely different backgrounds who are of different color, who come from different countries, different genders, different identities, um, will will bring a different approach to it. And part of it is just by not assuming what other people are thinking. Like you know what I know, and when you've got a, a board like the way it's been with so many people who've known stuff for so long, it's hard to tease out really assumptions from other things. And so bringing in that an entirely different um, uh, perspective is is, is going to be really important. And I think that that's, and so for me, it's like, I'm at the point where it's time for me to not just get out of the way, but in particular, you know, as a white man in my, in my middle age, middle age, 51, it's a perfect time for me to just like, you know, I can clear the room for people who, who, uh, who need to be brought up into it. I mean, the kind of in that kind of person, like, what are the skills, or who who are who are they? The um, the, the um, you know, I think someone who's kind and who can be a catalyst, who has connections and who um, has the ability to connect to other people, and and maybe comes in from a different part of the open source world than the traditional Linux platform. Um, you know, there's a lot of CentOS that's uh, that comes from like a traditional sysadmin background, even though it's used in so many different ways. And so, bringing in those thoughts would be part of it. Um, and then I think that you know to to back this point about it being a strategic position, someone who can think strategically and help and and make sure that the people that the parts of the project are kind of running themselves and you're looking at it from above instead of having to go in and stick hands and to make things happen in time. We have a question from Mike who asks, are there specific milestones that are planned for the Centos project this year? Uh, the big one that I'm keeping an eye on is Stream 9. Uh, you've seen some announcements on the DVL list about that moving forward. And to really get that moving and to get some community participation and some push and some drive into, OK, 9 is coming. What, would, what, what didn't you like about 8? Let's make sure that doesn't happen. And what did you love about 8? Let's make sure that still stays. Uh, what do you wish it could do that it doesn't do right now? Let's run those things up the flagpole and see what happens. And to try and, uh, we just recently got this new feature uh, SIG or enablement SIG, or I forget what it's called, but a place where we can discuss incoming features for what you would like to see happen in there. And I would love for that to explode with the creative input of our community. Uh, so many of you have admin so many more machines than I have and have so many strong opinions about how it should work. And I'd love to get that feedback pushed into the development pipeline so that we can actually build a system that doesn't just do what you want, but does it the way you want it to, behaves the way you want it to, and just makes your lives easier. Yeah, in, in the all way track, we had uh, this kind of discussion uh, across the Centos Dojo yesterday and today, and people are really excited. And I think the good thing with uh, Stream 9 is uh, you can see it's like uh, the alpha beta of what REL will be. So this is a good time to push for input and to say, I don't like that, I like that. This kernel patch is really needed for us. We can try to push it. I think one one of the first merge requests against the kernel was accepted a few days ago or something like that for C9 and there's things going on. And so uh, we want uh, to involve more of the community. And I think it's one of the goal, uh, at least at the board level that we want to try to push is stream is a good thing and we want to push uh, people to, to try to contribute and to understand that the model completely changed. And now there's a lot more input uh, that can be done by, by the community than before, especially for, for stream nine where uh, everything, uh, well, nothing is yet in stone. So I think this is the message. Uh, please, uh, please provide uh, feedback. And uh, in terms of other things that I'm expecting, we, we are working on the code of conduct. So this is something nice to have for every project. So it's, it's coming. So this is a short term goal, but we'll have one. And uh, a bit more documentation on the governance on how it's managed. It's uh, very nice. All the role will be pretty, uh, 
defined with clarity, which is, which is uh, super nice. So this is the short-term goal that we are working on uh, right now. And thanks to Rich that is doing a lot of writing those days. <laughs> All right, we have another question. Um, oh, we have several more questions. Uh, what what do you all think that the reimagining of the CentOS project will, what effect it will have on CentOS Plus and software collections? Uh, I can't speak directly to CentOS Plus, but I still love software collections. It meets this really specific need for me where I have this strange version of this application that needs to run with these strange libraries and I can just shove it over here in a corner. And yeah, it'd be great if I could run that in a container and totally one day when I find the time I will figure out how to run it in a container in like 2029. Um, I love software collections. I would like to see that continue to move forward and run. Uh, RHEL itself is moving in a slightly different direction. And so the community that cares about that is going to have to sort of step up on that plate. Uh, for, for CentOS Plus, that is a thing that I know a lot of our user community values. And we want to keep that around and keep that doing its thing. But in many ways, what CentOS Plus was doing was, well, here's some stuff we couldn't quite get into RHEL. And so we're going to put it over here in CentOS Plus. And well, that's kind of what streams for. And so how that really shakes out and where those dividing lines land is a really interesting space that could be explored. We have a couple questions about SIGs and I actually have my own question about SIGs. Um, so the, the first question here is from David. Um, are there any plans for mentorship or team building on SIGs? And I'm actually going to jump in and, and say a few things first. One is that for those of you who have not seen it, I have sent email to CentOS Devel asking for feedback from people that have participated in SIGs or wanted to about what they hate about it and what they would love to see differently and what they love about it. And I, I would love to see your feedback there because the SIGs candidly have been a place for developing Red Hat products in the upstream and i would like to see them actually be a a place where the community is packaging stuff for centos that's not just targeted for red hat products and we're seeing some of that with hyperscale i'd love to see more of it and i am available to consult with sigs to help you do outreach to other to projects that aren't represented help you do team building help you do uh trying to find contributors um but I need to hear from you what you're looking for. And I, I, I'm ready and available to work with you on that. And to uh, add on to that point, something that Rich won't say because he's humble, he's kind of our MVP guy for, uh, we have this problem here that needs someone to work on it. Does anyone volunteer? And then there's silence and then Rich raises his hand. Um, so he, he's always been just a wonderful advocate for all of you folks. And uh, as our community manager, he really cares deeply about each of you, not just in aggregate, but in specifics. And so if there's things that you need from him, Rich has just volunteered to be there. And if he can't get you what he needs, he's great about harassing us until we figure out what we need to find. Um, yeah. The other SIG question, which is actually the one that I was going to ask, is uh, what what other SIGs are? Well, there's two parts of this. One is um, which one of our SIGs are are moving to Stream Nine. But the answer is hopefully all of them real soon. But the other part of this question is what SIGs would you, as directors, like to see come to us? And my part of this question is what are you looking for when somebody proposes a SIG? What 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 do you evaluate these proposals based on? I'll keep talking. I feel like I'm answering all the questions, so I'll keep talking unless someone cuts I, me off here. I, I can give a little bit just so that you can take a breather or get some water. Um, as Red Hat, what I would 
speaking for Red Hat, I should say, what we're really interested in seeing in SIGs is folks who really want to explore new ideas. Um, there are absolutely things that are not priorities for Red Hat, and those are great opportunities to look at in SIGs. Um, there's hardware that Red Hat chooses not to support. Let's look at that in a SIG. There are ideas around how operating systems um, can be put together using the enterprise Linux bits that are not things Red Hat's interested in. Let's explore that in SIGs. Um, there are absolutely other projects out there that would be well advised to build on top of a base like CentOS Stream that Red Hat does not productize and ship to its customers. Let's absolutely look at those things in SIGs. Um, there is no reason to not explore the full space of what can happen in a SIG. And so I'm excited about literally anything that comes up, um, whether it is something that aligns with a Red Hat business objective or whether it's an area where Red Hat chooses not to explore. Um, those are the kinds of things that I would love to see happen. It's, it's, it's really wide open. Yeah. In terms of what I'm looking for, I, I have a fairly simple rubric. Uh, tell me what you want to do, tell me why you want to do it, and tell me why it's neat. And if you can give me those three, I'm going to be excited about it. Because I, as Bex mentioned, that there's a bunch of opportunities out here. And my, my, my view on the world is this very tight little pinhole. And I love to see these exciting things on the edge that I don't know or understand. Um, there's way too much technology going on in the ecosystem for me to get more than 10% of it in my head at a time, which means there's a 90% space that I know nothing about that is probably fascinating. And I'd love to see opportunities with that. I'd love to see some more partnership with some of the uh, Fedora Apple SIGs where we can try and find ways to really cross pollinate what we're doing. There's a discussion about that on CentOS Devel right now where how do we use Apple packages in our CentOS SIGs? And I have no idea what the answer to that is, but I'm excited to find out because it's neat and it could be really cool. And I, I think to, to retake a question that's been asked is, uh, does C9S have plan for immutable CentOS variant? Uh, this is one of the things, this is exciting. This is something that people could work on. We could have a look on, Basically, I guess you speak about the silver blue Fedora style of uh, OS, and this is something that would be super interesting to be worked on a SIG, and because uh, it's uh, basically tooling and generating things, and uh, if someone wants to work on it, we will be excited to support uh, the idea, I guess. But um, I, I, there's nothing I know of at this time, actually, to reply to the question completely. But this is typically something that uh, could uh, be bring to a SIG, and it would be very, very nice. Yeah, I'm personally fascinated by RPM OS tree. Um, if you, you'd like to stand up a SIG to work on that, I will probably try to find a way to partner with that because I don't understand it, but I know that it's neat. And so, yeah, that sounds cool. Um, pro propose a SIG, get some volunteers, and I will see about joining it. Our next question is from Matthew Miller, who uh, sorry, can I toss I in, yeah, I wanted to toss in a quick something that might be whatever, two quick pieces um, on the SIG bit. When, one, one thing I want that folks should kind of realize is that the SIGs are an, an opportunity to that where the, the CentOS project is just basically going to trust you to know your community and what you need. And if you say we need these, these 10 things differently and some, you know, and even if there's no magical or technical solution for it, here's the resources to build it out, here's the stuff, because like Pat was saying, all that part of the world, how are we possibly going to know about that? And so this is this is a this is a lot of a lot of trust in not in terms of um, security trust, but just saying, hey, you really know what you're doing. And if you say you need to do something really intense and different with the kernel and, and ship that under the CentOS Cento name, then let's put a formal thing together to, to and and people that we can embody that trust to know and take care of that going forward. Um, so that's a you know that's a a thing to think about because when it when it comes to to what your your approach might be, and personally, and like, what am I going to be doing hanging around when I'm not doing this stuff? Um, I like the kind of say I might be interested in seeing like a, a documentation SIG, um, something that's a little bit more, uh, and I don't know what that's going to look like and what it's going to do, but there's a lot of possibilities in there in terms of not just what's good for CentOS and and CentOS's downstream uh, with RHEL, but also the other rebuilds too. There may be an opportunity to to look at 
um, a lot of documentation collaboration in this space that helps everybody um, out there. Uh, Matthew Miller asks, um, and now it's scrolled out where I can't see it, um, about the, the purpose of the board. What is the vision of the role of the board? Is it is it activist? Should it provide active leadership? Or is it just there to, to react and make decisions? Personally, I, I view us as kind of uh, a bureaucracy of last resort, shall we say, where I really want the different elements of the community to feel like they can make choices and do things to echo what Carsten and Bex have been saying. Um, we, we don't want to tell you what to do. We want to give you a space to do a lot of things. And so I'm, I try to resist putting my thumb on the scale because I can't know everything that's going on in your technology or community space. Uh, what I can do is be an advocate and a resource when something gets stuck or when there's something wrong. And then you've got sort of a tacitly neutral body to appeal to to say, okay, how do we keep this moving? And so that, that's how I view our goal is to try and make this community a place where you can do things. Yeah, and we try to get uh, SIGs uh, basically uh, created to, to contain, for example, we had the infrastructure SIG that was created. It was uh, not a request directly from the committee. It was more... Uh, some way to formalize how you can work on infrastructure for CentOS. And this is the kind of thing we are doing and trying to give the power to the SIGs to work on technical issues, on documents, on things. This is, I think, part of the role uh, we have here. And uh, we are trying to go in this direction that if you have a problem with your SIG, come to us. But if you want to work, then talk to the SIG and they will uh, tell you how you can interact uh, with the community. We, we won't be here to tell you, you can yes or no rebuild this RPM. It's basically you need to talk to, to the people you are with and how you want to, to integrate and come with the ID to, to, to the SIG rather than to, to us, in my opinion. Um, we have a couple questions around our uh, chat mechanism. And I think that these are probably something that I should field. Um, is there, is it possible to move from IRC to something different? Uh, Fedora is moving to Matrix. So there are, um, there, there's been some informal discussion about bridging between Fedora's Matrix and our IRC channels, which would give a, a way to have that chat on another platform. There is also a I don't know what its formal official status is, but there's a Discord server where there's a lot of Fedora conversation and there is a CentOS channel on there, which is pretty quiet, but I'm always in there um, when I'm at, when I'm in work hours. So that is another alternative. We don't have any of these listed on our website and that's probably something that we, we should do. Um, you know, it's always been my perspective that we should go where the conversation is rather than forcing, you know, insisting that the conversation happen in particular places. And so I've tried to, to allow the, to allow, to recognize that the conversation is happening many places. And I'm, I'm in various social, uh, social networks where those conversations happen. Um, but, uh, you know, please do come talk to me about, about places where you would like to see these conversations and I'll try and, figure out a way to list these more formally on our website and, and make sure that we acknowledge them. And just to add something, we, we have, for example, sent to a stream office hours is on uh, Meet, so you can as well, if you would like to chat with us, it's quite a nice way to come and talk about stream. Uh, I show up yesterday and announced just to see what was going on and it's pretty cool discussion going on and uh, everybody's welcome, uh, except spammer with music, but uh, that's uh, another point. <laughs> <laughs> we had quite a people spamming the chat with music yesterday. It was fun. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm all on uh, having different, not speaking only IRC vs Matrix, because I think the discussion is, do we want other channel? And I think we are all open. Uh, planning a video call is always a bit harder because you need to be in a nice room and things like that. You can't do it. So maybe sometime text chat is better. But I, I'm, I really like the way uh, to, to, to do... Uh, hang out uh, in any video chat we can use it's really it's really nice and it it has a different uh, 
atmosphere, I would say. So yeah, we're trying to to do that. And uh, one of the other idea was to to try to record the the center's board meeting and uh, to be able to publish it at a point. And so we are looking as well to 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 work more and more with video and and things that are a bit more interactive as well. Uh, Matthew Miller asks if there's a process for um, evaluating and retiring SIGs over time. We do actually have a few SIGs that are listed as retired or inactive, and uh, we, we, don't, we don't have a lot of process around that. We don't have a formal process for evaluating a SIG. We do ask our SIGs to report quarterly, and some of them do and some of them do not and we don't really have a process or any kind of enforcement around that. Um, I have been working on uh, overhauling our SIG documentation, and I, I re referred to that earlier. That's why I've asked current participants to give their feedback as we rewrite those documents. But, uh, you know, we want to strike a balance between having a process that SIGs can follow so that they know what to do and also not having so much bureaucracy that, that people feel that that's overwhelming and that they're not having fun. And uh, that's that's the balance that I'd like to strike. But uh, of course, uh, we can hear from any directors that have an opinion on this too. Yeah, it's but my hope is that uh, much like we can continue to attract sort of the drive by patching. And so the more uplift there is required for people to hop onto a SIG and to do something the, the less likely they are to submit the five line patch that hits an actual bug that they're actually running into. And so there is this complicated balancing act. Um, if, for example, someone wanted to put together a hardware test SIG that looked like the Red Hat hardware certification platform, that would be cool. But then once you put it together, okay, the packages are there. Um, they don't really need any maintenance because they just run a bunch of self tests and so not having them release new RPMs wouldn't necessarily be an indicator that the SIG is dead, just that they actually like finished what they set out to accomplish and it's still working. And so finding a way of keeping that kind of effort alive where you built a piece of software to do a specific thing that is part of our ecosystem and it does it. And we don't want that to get retired because it doesn't require any more maintenance. And what that looks like is a good question. I guess I would chime in only by saying that uh, one of the weird quirks of the jobs that Rich and I have is that we we do some level of like going to get resources. Um, and so SIGs that make it too hard to join or SIGs that choose not to be active, or SIGs that frankly just choose not to say, hey, it's all still working. It creates a challenge when Rich and I are going back and going, hey, we'd like some resources. We'd like to share exciting things. We'd like to energize, you know, in, in my case, specifically looking at the folks that I talk to regularly in Red Hat, I'd like to energize those folks. I want them to be excited about this. Um, I want to convince my, my colleagues in product management to come have frank conversations. Um, and the way that we do that is by knowing what's going on. It's, it's hard to sing the praises if you've hidden your work. Um, and that kind of goes back to the idea of the board as an enabler. Um, and, and, and even to Matthew's question, the board as occasionally leading the charge and occasionally standing behind and like helping everybody else be successful. Um, and it, it, it is a balancing act. David asks, where are the metrics? Why have we not stolen analytics from Fedora? Um, that, that seems like an interesting question that I would love for you to bring to our infrastructure SIG team, as I suspect that there's uh, infrastructure work required there, and they would uh, know best. Historically, the CentOS project has avoided publishing statistics because it was seen as um, competing against Red Hat to, to tout those numbers. And, and now that we have a, a better relationship with the RHEL team, 
um, a lot of people are asking for statistics around CentOS and, and our answer is, well, we've never done that because we've never done that. And so, yeah, I, I am hoping, I, I'm already working with CPE, I've been asking CPE, I should say, um, for some help around getting some of the statistics. Um, and, and of course, Matthew's statistics do reflect uh, CentOS stream now that the, uh, what's it called, the, the count me functionalities in DNF. So we have some of that in Matthew's statistics, but but I would love to to have more. Um, you know, there's always the caveat that when we publish statistics that they don't represent actual machines, you know, an IP address might represent something other than a single machine. The statistics are a a proxy for for community for usage. They're not exact numbers and and but we can give those caveats. Do we have any other any other questions that are oh here we go just came it's a question for pat and thomas i'm really interested in the implementation of stream in the in fermilab and cern do you have any comments on that and i will remind you once again that our directors do not represent their employers but uh do you want to speak to that well i i can say just world it's it's being looked at and we don't have a, a, a clear decision yet and uh, we are looking uh, at all the possibilities so i can't give you an answer right right here uh, right now it, it's an ongoing uh, process and it's still early uh, in terms of uh, release cycle if you want so so no i don't have a specific i'd like to share right now but uh, i mean uh, we we have uh, uh, a team working on that and I'm not part in this team anymore uh, directly doing um, Linux uh, deployment so I suggest that if you have interest uh, to follow up uh, the blog uh, at CERN or asking uh, around but uh, I don't have specific info I can share today unfortunately. Yeah I can say uh, I want to say a week or two ago uh, CERN and Fermilab put out an official statement and so I will encourage you to uh, review that uh, I put the link to it on the scientificlinux.org page. Uh, you can find it other places, but there's a link to the uh, official statements there. Uh, those are really going to be your best bet for what the actual positions are, as they were written by the people who make those decisions. Um, it, it is something that is being discussed far above uh, my sort of job role. And so we, it is definitely a thing that we're talking about, but as to what we're saying, uh, your best bet's really going to be to go to those statements. Watching the Q&A tab, if there are questions being asked in the main chat, do copy them over the Q&A tab because I'm not watching the main chat. Um, the, we have another question from Mike. Are there plans for Stream 8 and Stream 9 container images? Are there not stream eight container images? I thought there were. That's where I've used I thought, them. I thought too, because uh, I mean, it was a bit uh, slow at the beginning, but now I thought it was available, but it, it's in the in the pipeline if it's not yet available. And uh, of course for nine, it will come as well. I think there's no no big question on that. And unless yeah. uh, Brian wants to add something, but I think uh, it was planned. Uh, there, are, there are images on yeah, uh, I, you I, it yeah, there's, there are images in .io. I, this is weirdly the second time that I've heard this question, which suggests to me that perhaps as a board, we should do a little bit more publicity work around the fact that these images have shipped or assist the appropriate SIG in doing that publicity work. Um, I haven't pulled the images it, as a person, but I, they do apparently exist. Yeah, and as for the Stream 9 container images, um, I'm not actually sure that Stream 9 is installable yet. And so it may be a bit for container images for those, but that is something I would definitely like to see early-ish in the Stream 9 cycle, is to see what a minimal container might look like in a stream context. Now that, again, because we're ahead of the curve, we can decide what goes in those containers. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be, well, 
Red Hat CPE or Red Hat product engineering said, this is what a minimal container looks like and we clone that. Um, we, we, we get to say what a minimal container looks like and they decide if that's enough for them. And so this could give us a really interesting opportunity to define out what a container looks like for our community that actually meets our needs. I suspect it's gonna be pretty close to that container, but we've just kind of inherited that kickstart from upstream, which isn't necessarily bad, but we have a chance to, instead of inherit it, decide for ourselves what these containers should be and leverage the administrative expertise of our community on, no, seriously, I'm running 10 million containers in production and every last one of them installed these three extra RPMs. Well, let's just put them in. Or every last one of these containers is removing these seven RPMs. Let's take them out. And so, yeah, that, that's a conversation I would love to see uh, evolve and grow in the community. I've also made a note of the comment in the chat that uh, registry.centos.org is not updated and I'll, I'll follow up on that next week. All right. Um, we are actually at the end of the scheduled time. We have time for another question or two if, if you get them in right away. But uh, um, I mean, we could potentially go to the end of the hour, but this is where we're scheduled to end. Does anyone else have any anything else they'd like to, to ask our board representatives here? Well, thank you all so much for attending. And uh, thank you for the, the directors for participating. We have a short break now between uh, before the next session. And um, please join us in the hallway track. And uh, our next session will be uh, about keeping track of CentOS infrastructure with Ansible. And I never know if you're supposed to say ARA or ARA, but uh, this will be with, uh, with David and Fabian. So please do join us again in about 20 minutes. Thank you. I was, I thought it was R, like a pirate. R. Bye, thank you. That's how we pronounce it. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Cheers. <laughs>